Well, hello, friends. Mr. Schreinkler here. Uh, well, we've been looking at a lot of different things that have to do with air. Um, so I appreciate your exploring that you've done. We found out that air can move things. We found out that air can take up space. Um, and then we just recently took a look at warm air and some properties of warm air. Okay, we found out about warm air being less dense than cooler air. So thank you for all your work with, with those air concepts. We're going to do one more and then we're going to move on to some concepts of weather because air and weather are very closely related. We're going to take a look at moving air, okay? And one concept of moving air and what it does. And we're going to be able to see some things that moving air does. And what we're going to take a look at is something that this dude by the name of Daniel Bernoulli a long time ago uh, did a lot of experiments with, and it's actually called Bernoulli's Principle. Well, what, one of the things that he studied was how when air is moving fast, we can think of wind or anything that's making air blowing fast, like when we're blowing air, that that creates low air pressure, okay? So we can think of pressure is pushing, so we can create some low air pressure. All right, let me show you a quick example. I have a piece of paper I'm just holding here. I'm gonna blow air over the top, so there'll be moving air over the top, and air won't be really moving underneath the bottom. And let's see if that changes the pressure at all. So watch the paper as I blow over the top. Did you see that? Yeah, the paper actually went up because I had fast moving air over the top, and that lowered some of the pressure on the top, meaning the air pressure below it was greater. Well, let's take a look at how that can impact actually airplanes and airplanes getting lift off the ground. I have what looks like a cross section of an airplane wing right here. Okay, so I have this cross section here and these beads are gonna represent air particles, okay? When they are moving fast, they're stretched out. When they are not moving fast, they are going to be closer together. And when I say stretched out, meaning they'll be spread apart. Now, this is a cross section of an airplane wing, so the airplane would be moving this way. Now, um, if we take a look, this would be the top of the wing. Let's pretend these are little particles of air. When the, the air that's moving across the top, the particles, are spread out, okay? So the beads are spread out a little bit. There's a little bit of space between them. I can kind of move them around, okay? Because that air is moving fast as it goes across this airplane, this side of the airplane wing. Okay, on the bottom, and that creates low pressure on the top. On the bottom, you can see they're close together. They aren't really, you know, moving as fast. And so therefore the pressure is higher here, giving this lift, okay? Giving this wing some what we call lift. So this is one of, this, one of the things that Bernoulli studied is that fast moving air lowers air pressure. So we actually were lowering the air pressure on the top of the wing. Okay, let's take a look at it a couple of other ways. So if I take two cans, empty cans, and I tied them. I'm gonna make some air moving right between the two cans, okay? And let's see what they do, okay? So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna blow some air right through here. Do you notice how they come together? They do, and that's because they have fast moving air so what pressure air is in the middle? Is it high or low? You are right, low pressure in the middle because I had fast moving air there. So the higher pressure on the outside, higher compared to between the cans, pushed these two cans together, made these two cans come together. Okay, Bernoulli's principle at work. Well, we can see it a couple of other ways. I have a really, really long bag here. Okay, I have this really long bag, and I am going to put some air into my really long bag. All right, now, it's long, so it would take a lot of breaths. You can kind of see side view there. All right, so now, what I'm gonna do is blow air here, and I want you to come along with me. Let's see how many breaths it takes. So here we go. That 
That was my fifth one. And, you know, I did all right. I got some, got some air in here. You know, not great. But now what I'm going to do is I am going to bring my mouth away from the bag a little bit. I'm going to bring my mouth away from the bag. And what I'm going to do is just blow one big breath of air in here. And I'm going to use Bernoulli's principle. I'm going to try to lower the pressure on the outside of the bag. And I'm going to let some air in the surrounding room, in the, in the room that's surrounding the bag, come in. Let's check it out. So here I go. My face is a little bit away from the bag. Oh, as you can see, I went and got quite a bit of air in this bag. This is one breath of air. Now, people often say, hey, Mr. Schrank, there's a lot of air coming out of you because you're talking all the time. Well, this is science. Yeah, so this is science. What I did was I had fast-moving air right around the outside of the bag. What happened, that, that created low pressure. The higher pressure in the room came rushing in. Firefighters will use this. They'll go and put, after there's a fire in a building, and it's just kind of smoky, and they want to clear out the smoke, what they will do is they will go and they'll get some fast-moving air with fans, and they blow it into the building, but they don't put the fans right up to the door. Pretend this is the door of the building. They'll put them out here. That will allow that air from out here to come in because there's low pressure here, and that higher pressure air wants to take up that space of the lower pressure air, so it takes up that space. All right? So Bernoulli's principle at work. Now, let's take a look at a couple of others. So the next thing I have that we're going to take a look at is a ping pong ball, okay? So I have a good old ping pong ball here. Now, if I were going to go and try to keep this ball in the air without touching it, about this high above my face, without using my hands, I could go like this, and I could blow air up at it. Well, that would take a while, okay? It would take a lot of air, okay? So I'm going to use Bernoulli's principle with my hair dryer. Let's take a uh, look here. So I have my hair dryer. There's going to be fast moving air right around the ball, hopefully creating some low air pressure. And the higher pressure air in the room will keep the ball in this stream. Okay? Now, as you can see, Bernoulli's principle at work. And I can go and tilt it a little bit. And it stays here until gravity takes over. Now, I know some of you demonstrated this with air moving things. But here we can see it with using Bernoulli's principle and creating some low air pressure right around the ball. So Bernoulli's principle at work. Okay, now, I always say in science, I try to do it bigger and better. And so I have, Ber I call this Daniel Bernoulli's hair dryer. I don't, you probably, you actually didn't have a hair dryer back then. But um, what I'm going to do is quickly use it to dry my hair. Now, kids don't do this at home because uh, I'm a trained professional and I have some eye protection right now. So I'm going to quickly dry my hair, then we'll get back to science. Okay, so let's see. Sorry, I just, I didn't have time to get my hair all the way dry. So, so that's what's going on here. So let me quickly get my hair dry. Here we go. I know you didn't want to come here and open this video up this morning and or this afternoon whenever you're taking a look at this and watch some guy in a white coat dry his hair. But I'm going to use this science tool to look at what I call Daniel Bernoulli's paperwork. Now, uh, this is what I call Daniel Bernoulli's paperwork, and I don't think he really did his paperwork on this kind of paper. But for this experiment, we're gonna we're gonna use it. Um, now, friends, I am going to be rolling it back up and using it for uh, cleaning up some spills. So I'm not going to waste it. This is precious stuff right now, as you know. And so um, I am going to put it right on this broom handle. Okay, Bernoulli's paperwork is what I call this. Scientists, as we know, do a lot of paperwork. Hopefully you're keeping track of things 
in a science notebook or just on a group of papers that you may have. And so I'm going to put his paperwork right here. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to get some air moving really fast. And let's check this out. So here we go. I am going to be trying to, uh, to make his paperwork move. And then we'll talk about if we see anything going on, what it is. <laughs> Now, friends, what was really happening here is I had fast-moving air going right around the paper. What that did was that helped create a little pocket of low air pressure, low air pressure up here. Therefore, the higher pressure uh, air in the room gave this lift, okay? And so I created low pressure here. The higher pressure in the air uh, went and, and lifted it up, air in the room. And then, of course, gravity eventually takes over. So Bernoulli's paperwork uh, at work here. So friends, I would like you to submit either an example of Bernoulli's paperwork. can be one that we did. It can be one even like the paper, the blowing over the paper. Okay. You could do that. Okay. Um, if you want to do one of the other ones, you could use different objects than the cans. Probably not gonna have you do, you know, the actual going and, and grabbing the leaf blower, okay? Um, but if you have something you wanna share with an adult that you're, you're working with, that's fine. Um, you could do a bag, you don't need a big bag like this. You could use a small plastic bag. Remember, I kept my face back from it and I blew air really fast. The higher pressure in the room went and took up that space. Okay, and that was Bernoulli's paperwork, paper, uh, Bernoulli's paperwork, I'm still on that. Uh, Bernoulli's principle in action, fast moving air, lowering air pressure, higher pressure air coming and moving in. Okay, so you could do one of those demonstrations or you could draw one, okay, or more than one. All right, so that could be a submission if you don't want to use the materials or you're unable to do so, no worries. You could submit a drawing of one too. All right, friends, we're gonna be using all this information that we have about air, and we're gonna be using it as we study weather. So I'm looking forward to seeing your submissions. Have an awesome rest of your day. Keep up the great scientific thinking.